Enmeshed relationships. Can you be your own person? Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Here we are, Signposts for Living with Dr. Kirsten Hunter, and here we are with gorgeous Kristen Coggan. How are you doing, darling? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We've just had a really lovely catch-up, haven't we? Yes. It's been a big day. <laughs> it has been a big day. <laughs> here we are. And I said to you, we are talking about enmeshed relationships, mm-hmm. and your response was? What is that? What What even is that? What is that? And I covered this briefly in Psych in Your Car, but I want to talk about it again because um, it's something that, you know, exactly what is that? Mm -hmm. And it's really good to talk through because it's really common and very significant for people. So have you heard of the word enmeshed before? Uh, Only when it comes to the internet and connectivity and meshing the Wi-Fi through my house. (laughs) Really? (laughs) (laughs) That's not what we're talking about? No, no. Okay, no. Oh, okay. So here's the thing, right? Enmeshed relationships are when there's a lack of boundaries in relationships, right? So basically, there's three types of relationships. There's a healthy one where you've got your sense of this is us. Everyone, I'm holding my hands up. That's really Mm -hmm. unhelpful, isn't it? Mm. (laughs) So um, we've got a sense of us, but within that sense of us, there are two individuals and there's their individuality. Mm Mm-hmm. And you're able to say, okay, this is me, this is you, Uh, I have a different uh, opinion to you often, this is what I'm doing, that's what you're doing, and there's a respect for that difference. Mm -hmm. So that's um, a healthy relationship. Then there's two others. There's estrangement, so that's when the sense of us is not there because one person has left the building. Won't talk about estrangement, that's fine. And then the third is enmeshment, and that is with a sense of us. Instead of having two individuals you have two people who are interlinked. And so you have a lack of individuality. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which is a case of usually there's a primary, which is usually the parent, and then usually there's a secondary, which is the child. Right. And what that means is that the parent thinks that they have vote in the child's life with regard to their choices they make. Mm-hmm. And they come and give a lot of advice And the advice means do what I say. Um, And, uh, yeah, when that child grows up and becomes an adult and they have a partner and you hope that they have individuality, um, there's kind of three people in the bed. They're not actually their own person to have a relationship. Okay. So So the parent's still there. The parent's in there. Yes. Yes. And, um, you know, just to go back a little bit, mm-hmm. have I lost you? you no. Nah, you nah, with me? Okay. Everybody, I've literally I've got, got the visual of your hands. Yeah, though. I've literally got like a finger doing, help me with That's this. That's the okay sign. Like I've got the, the okay. The so okay I've got sign. two two kind of like pointing fingers and thumbs um, making Linking. a circle and then interlinked. Yep. Yeah, a bit like an infinity. Yeah, so that's mm-hmm. kind of the visual. Anyway, when we're children, we are enmeshed with our parent and that's a healthy thing mm-hmm. because... The child is dependent on the parent and the child says, hey, I'm with my mum and they're amazing and I'm with my dad and they're amazing and because they're amazing, I'm amazing and I need them to be okay in the world and we're a unit. So children are enmeshed with their parent Mm -hmm. and that's a really healthy thing. Um, And then when we become, um, well, depends on the individual and the gender often, but as we're kind of going into preteen, so we're hitting Mm -hmm. 10, 11, 12, we're starting to say, who am I and what do I think? And I disagree with my parents. <laughs> <laughs> and and then we kick into teen years, right? Mm-hmm. These days it's 12, 13, 14 really, um, all the way through. And that's when the child's saying, on principle, I need to disagree with you, mum and dad, to be mm-hmm. my own person. And um, Getting a lot of that right now. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, teenagers get a really bad rap don't they? Mm. Because they are not necessarily agreeable and um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) they can have attitude. But what that actually is, is them saying, I am becoming my own person. I'm needing my own sense of agency, my own, my own vote, my own opinion, my own person. And I need to kind of leave the nest and create my own nest a little bit. Mm -hmm. And they're becoming incredibly involved with their peers and they look to their peers for approval and their identity, and they're kind of moving away from the parent. Yep. Not a lot of parents freak out about that, which is unfortunate because it's actually developmentally required. 
So, you know, that's um, moving from enmeshment to individuation. Mm -hmm. And um, what happens sometimes is if a parent doesn't understand that that's a healthy thing, they hold on to the child. Mm -hmm. And the child thinks that that is a version of love and they might feel responsible for the parent, they don't distress the parent, or they just don't have that sense of freedom. They might kind of feel like they're pressured in some direction and so they remain enmeshed with the parent and so you know it's a case of instead of what I think it's of what we think mm-hmm. and the parent has a lot of choice the parent might choose what the kids subjects are what their career choices are who their friends are who they date what they like to wear um, you'll often see it where the kid listens to the parents music mm-hmm. only um, and um, yeah, and so we really have this sort of um, failure to launch, if that makes sense. Yeah, this is great. You interested? Well, I am because my kids do nothing that I ask or suggest. <laughs> so you're well. validating that for me. It's okay. <laughs> oh, big fat golden stamp. Yep, <laughs> I'm a winner. <laughs> Yeah, they're doing great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. I remember one time, Locke's going to kill me for saying this. Um, Locke is our eldest, yeah, 21. And um, he's a sweetheart. He honestly is. He's just a chill bean. And, um, yeah, one day he, he came and he said to me, oh, my friend, his, um, his mum, she cooks potatoes better than you. and um i actually do think i'm a bit embarrassed i think actually to get offended by his intention but um stupid right yeah if that's all he can pick on he's doing pretty well yeah (laughs) but that was him saying um i'm different i have a different opinion you're not you're not perfect (laughs) i ended up coming back to him and saying yeah i totally agree her potatoes are amazing (laughs) <laughs> but the, yeah. a stupid example but um these are kind of exercises in needing to have a difference of opinion yes. and creating it even though there's actually no drama at all mm. yeah and often attitude creates that mm-hmm. so i've even had a, a not a client but a partner of a client commit suicide over enmeshment right so as much as i'm making light of it it's not funny mm-hmm. um and that is when um you know, you might hear of kind of like the 55-year-old that lives with mum. Yep. That might be an enmeshed relationship. Okay, yep. You know? And this person who I'm ex- uh, referring to, they were in a loving relationship with their female partner, they were male, and um, they, the female partner kept being frustrated that he was dictated to by his mother, you know, mm-hmm. I need you here now. No, you can't go and travel here. No, you can't move in with your partner. You know, you need to be available to me. Mm -hmm. Um, And he was so scared of conflict and so scared of her disapproval and believed that she, you know, well, I need to, you know, mum's just looking out for me and I don't Mm. want to upset her. So he didn't have the backbone to stand up to his mum and be his own person. Um, They broke up several times. Eventually he, she broke up and said, I just can't have three of us in the bed. Mm -hmm. And he committed suicide. Wow. You know. So she was my client. I never met him. Um, so, you know, it, it's not a small deal not Definitely being able not. to be your own person. Mm. Yeah. Have you ever come across anything like this before with any stories, people? Not personally. Yeah. Well, not that I can think off the top of my head. Mm. Something will probably come to me at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Don't text me. <laughs> <laughs> After one of these, you sent me a text very late at night. I'm like, lucky I'm up, sweetheart. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Oh. Yeah, no, I can't think of anything in particular. Oh. Yeah, nothing's coming to mind. Well, I don't I don't actually know the stats on this, but that's a good one to find. But um it's one of those things where if you don't experience enmeshment, it's just completely not your world, you don't get it. If you don't do experience enmeshment and you come into session and I say, Okay, what you're describing is enmeshment, it's like the it's like this, you know, the sudden kind of light opens mm. above them and the, you know the angels sing because they're like oh it's not just me this is a thing so and what's the answer you've got to somehow manage the relationship with the parent the answer is in information learning this is what's happening huge mm. how the hell are you going to find it unless you have a pretty switched on psychologist or you happen to 
come upon a fantastic podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's hard. It's really hard to get mm. this information, firstly, because it's a specialised area. Um, secondly, you then have to build within yourself the strength to stand up to mm. a parent that you'd love. You then have to work out what a healthy version is when you don't know what that is because mm. you've never really been your own person. Um, and then you need to create boundaries and you need to stand on your own two feet and say, this is what my preference is. These are my choices in life. This is the person I choose to be and this is how I choose to parent in mm-hmm. mesh in mesh parents, oh, now I can, mm. yeah, and mesh grandparents typically are highly critical. They say you should do this. This is not good enough. You're not being a good enough parent. You know, this isn't okay. They're very, very, very critical mm-hmm. because you know. Have seen that? Have you? Yes. What with have you seen? Some people that I know. Well, it's quite funny. Mm. So I know a couple who've got small children, mm. and they've got parents who are very much like that. So they try and. Um, tell the couple how to live their lives but also how to raise their kids. There you go. And it's quite funny because the kids call the grandparents out on it. No. Yeah. What do they say? Like, the, Well, they won't cut, say anything to the grandparents but they will have a chat about it away from the grandparents with their parents. They've had a chat with me. Really? About what Nanny and Poppy do, yeah. What kind of language do they use? Um, things like Poppy's so old-fashioned. Right. If I get water on the floor of the bathroom, it's a bad thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, just things like that. In the parents' house? In the grandparents' house. Oh, well, grandparents do ha- get to dictate their own houses, don't they? I guess so. But obviously they step over into the parents' house. Yeah, again. there's a little bit of overrun because they're not there all the time, so these people don't see each other often. Right. Yeah. Well, it's a really classic example when the grandparent comes and criticises the parent and basically undermines their confidence again, mm. under, undermines their individuality. Yeah. And so the process of creating boundaries. Now, what is really, 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 when I say really, I, I would argue about 90% um, just through my exposure in the last 21 years. 21 now, not 20. Um, <laughs> uh, I can tell every time Lockie gets older. Anyway, um, is that the child in the meshed relationship physically moves away. They physically move away from the parents so that they create boundaries through geography. Yeah. And that's how they actually figure it out. Really common. Because it's like, um, and the two, the the couple, they say, look, if we're going to make a go of our relationship, we need to create some space so that we can become our own, our own relationship, our Mm -hmm. own, our own coupleness, I guess. And um, the grandparent can't just pop in. And that's another thing. The grandparent will just pop in literally and step into the house and presume to take over the house and reorganise and restructure and tell them how they're doing it all wrong. And so, yeah, they create that boundary in that kind of way. So, yeah, in mesh relationships, they're incredibly common and we don't understand what's going on because it's normal to us. And we think that we're just being very sensitive or that, I don't know, we think it's just a difference in family relationships. Mm. When it's actually legitimately dysfunctional. Wow. Yeah. So I thought it'd be a really good one to talk mm. about just because it's so unknown. I have been completely unaware. I know. And if you want to Google it, everybody, it's enmeshment, which is E N M E S H M E N T. Enmeshment. Good one to Google. I nice. would recommend Dr. Google on that one. Well, that's a big call. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, education, it's a good yep. thing. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Very, very good. And um, can you imagine if you couldn't be your own person, if you couldn't make your own choices, if you couldn't choose your own clothes, partner, boundaries? As an adult, that would be horrendous, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, not being able to be who you are. Mm. Yeah, it's a massive issue. Mm. Absolutely. Anyway, everyone, I just wanted to come together and, and have this conversation because I just love getting this information out there. And for people who are experiencing enmeshed relationships, this is going to resonate enormously and mm-hmm. it's going to open up your brain. And for other people, you might know people who have experienced yep. enmeshed relationships. All right, everybody. So um, we've got the Signpost for Living books and you're welcome to jump on the website, kirstenhunterauthor.com and Facebook and Instagram, Kirsten Hunter Author and Twitter, Kirsten Hunter AU. So I'll catch you next time. Thank you, Kristen. Beautiful. See you. Bye. Bye, darling. <laughs>